If you're shopping for the best AMD gaming GPU, should you buy the new Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 9070 XT or stick with the 7900 XTX? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist, and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the UPC FC series, we've been helping you make the right choice by pitting two components against each other in a PC octagon to see who wins. In this video, our focus will be on the two top gaming GPUs from AMD, with the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 9070 XT in the red corner, taking on the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 7900 XTX VaporX in the blue corner. In addition to showing you benchmarks across 19 games, I will also demystify AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution or FSR, show how the performance of these cards changes with overclocking, and show how the value changes with real world pricing. And if you stick around, I'll be giving away a PowerColor Red Devil RX 9070 XT XT, something you will definitely not want to miss. It's really not rocket science, so before the main event gets started, let's jump straight into demystifying FSR upscaling. Image upscaling has become a common graphics option in PC games. In most modern titles, depending on your GPU, you'll be presented with choices between Nvidia's Deep Learning Super Sampling, or a DLSS, AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution, or FSR, or Intel's XE Super Sampling, or XESS. All are upscaling technologies that promise higher frame rates in games. Nvidia has enjoyed an early advantage in terms of image quality, however, AMD recently released a new version of FSR with their RDNA 4 graphics cards that promises significantly improved image quality when compared with previous versions, so let's see if that's true. At a high level, upscaling technologies such as FSR render your game at a lower resolution to improve performance. They then use algorithms to upscale the image to fit your monitor and fill in missing information based on various inputs. Despite accomplishing the same goal, FSR 3 and FSR 4 use very different approaches. All the versions of FSR used an algorithm to upscale the image and fill in missing details before applying a sharpening filter. It was basically temporal super resolution or TSR, but with AMD's branding. However, with the introduction of FSR 4, AMD moved away from a software only approach to a machine learning based approach that leverages dedicated AI hardware. AMD claims that this approach significantly improves image quality over FSR 3.1 with better detail preservation and reduced ghosting and artifacts. The downside is that it's only available on 9000 series G GPUs since earlier Radeon cards do not have the hardware accelerated features found in the new RDNA 4 architecture. So is FSR 4 better than FSR 3? If we take a look at two modern games, Horizon Forbidden West and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, we should be able to answer this question. First, let's start by comparing image quality so we can see if AMD was actually able to make improvements. It becomes immediately apparent that FSR 4 is a far superior implementation of upscaling, fixing virtually all of the issues we saw with FSR 3. For example, a big area where FSR 3 struggled was with ghosting. But as you can see with FSR 4, this has been resolved, with the waterfall now showing the water particles as intended, in a much more realistic way. But does this enhanced image quality have a performance impact? If we take a look at the Ratchet and Clank opening cutscene, it's clear that there is indeed a performance penalty at 4K with performance mode selected, with FSR 4 around 8% slower on average than FSR 3. This is to be expected given the additional computation that's required to generate superior image quality. With that said, AMD is still technically behind Nvidia in terms of image reconstruction, but they took a huge leap forward with the introduction of FSR 4. Upscaling is now a feature you can look forward to on an AMD GPU, something that was tough to claim in the past. As mentioned earlier, the battle today is between AMD's two top gaming GPUs with the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 9070 XT in the red corner, taking on the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 7900 XTX VaporX in the blue corner. The test system being used to run the benchmarks is my AMD AM5 open bench table with the following components. For the CPU we have an AMD Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. For the motherboard we have an ASUS ROG Crosshair X870E Hero. For RAM we have G-Skill Ripjaws M5 Neo RGB 32GB of DDR5 6000 at CL26. For GPU 1 we have a Sapphire Nitro Plus AMD Radeon RX 9070XT. For GPU 2 we have a Sapphire Nitro Plus AMD Radeon RX 7900XTX VaporX. For the CPU cooler we have an ASUS ROG Ryo 3 360mm AIO. For storage we have 4TB Samsung 990 Pro NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And for the PSU, we have a Corsair HX 1200i Platinum 1200W power supply. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. All benchmark testing was performed with the GPUs at their default clocks. For the Sapphire Nitro Plus 7900 XTX, this means a 
core clock increase of 210 megahertz and a boost clock increase of 180 megahertz over the reference spec. Whereas for the Sapphire Nitro Plus 9070 XT, this means a core clock increase of 120 megahertz and a boost clock increase of 90 megahertz over the reference spec. I also applied a number of performance enhancing tweaks to the 9800X3D, which can be found in my How to Tune an AMD AM5 Ryzen CPU step-by-step -step guide video. In order to thoroughly test the GPUs, I ran the benchmarks at ultra graphic settings. I test GPUs at ultra settings because this places maximum load on each GPU, which is the best way to compare relative performance. In addition, I decided against using frame generation for the benchmarks to avoid any biasing of the results. I did, however, use upscaling, but only when it was automatically selected as part of the standard graphics options, which when used is clearly denoted on the charts. And finally, I added a new game to the benchmark suite, Assassin's Creed Shadows, which has been well received and has a great built-in benchmark. With the GPUs ready to go, let's check the benchmarks. But before we do, I think it's only appropriate to introduce this the right way. Over to you, Bruce. And now, it's time! Introducing the components fighting for Blackbird PC Tech Benchmark Supremacy. In the blue corner, we have the champion. In the red corner, we have the challenger. Who will win this battle royale? Stay tuned to find out. As you can see from the benchmark results, the 9070 XT performed extremely well against the 7900 XTX at default clocks, beating it in multiple games. But what happens when we overclock the GPUs? There are two primary ways to overclock an AMD GPU. You can use automatic tuning features, or you can tune it manually using Adrenaline, or a third-party tool like ASUS GPU Tweak 3. When I used the automatic tuning option in Adrenaline for my Sapphire Nitro Plus 9070 XT, it resulted in a GPU boost clock of 103 MHz. For my Sapphire Nitro Plus 7900 XTX, there are multiple automatic tuning options to choose from, so I tested them all. The option that provided the largest boost in performance was the Auto Overclock VRAM option, which resulted in a VRAM clock boost of 150 MHz. Keep in mind that these Sapphire Nitro Plus GPUs have significantly higher core and boost clocks compared to the AMD spec, so these boosts are on top of that. To see what impact these changes had on performance, I ran 3 Mark Speedway, Port Royal, and Steel Nomad. As you can see from the results, the performance boost for the 9070 XT was 
was not meaningful, with a roughly 1% increase in scores. This should not come as a surprise given that this card was somewhat insensitive to changes in GPU frequency offset. The performance boost for the 7900 XDX, however, was a little better, but still not meaningful, with a roughly 2% increase in scores. So based on these results, I wouldn't bother using the automatic tuning options for either card. To find the max overclock for each card, I used the custom option in Adrenaline. For the 9070 XT, this option is located under tuning presets, whereas for the 7900 XTX, this option is located under manual tuning. To learn how to dial in an optimum overclock for any AMD Radeon GPU, you can follow the steps I outline in my How to Undervolt an Overclock Radeon RX 9070 XT video. For my Sapphire Nitro Plus 9070 XT, I was able to decrease the voltage offset by 100 millivolts and increase the memory clock by 160 megahertz, which is good. I also tried using the fast timing option under memory timing, and although I was able to slightly increase the performance in Speedway and Port Royal, Steel Nomad crashed so it's not an option I would recommend using. For my Sapphire Nitro Plus 7900 XDX, I was able to decrease the voltage offset by 90 millivolts, increase the GPU boost clock by 325 megahertz, and increase the memory clock by 330 megahertz, which is great. To see what impact these overclocks have on performance, I reran 3 d Mark Speedway, Port Royal, and Steel Nomad. As you can see from the results, the increase in performance for my Sapphire Nitro Plus 9070 XT was good, with improvements of around 7% over the default base clocks. However, the increase in performance for my Sapphire Nitro Plus 7900 XTX was much better, with improvements of around 11% over the default base clocks. Keep in mind that both of these cards are heavily overclocked from the factory, so double digit percentage increases in performance is exceptionally good. This may indicate that my 7900 XTX GPU is a golden sample, whereas my 9070 XT is not, or it may simply be on trend for these cards, something that you would only be able to verify by testing many more of these cards. If you look at the temperatures, both cards run cool, even with the max overclock, so the coolers on both cards appear to be more than sufficient. That said, the memory temperatures for the 9070 XT are relatively high, which is likely limiting the max overclock potential for the VRAM on this card. If we now look at some games, starting with Total War Warhammer 3, it becomes clear that the performance increases are almost identical to the 3D Mark results with average increases of 12.8% for the 7900 XDX and 6.9% for the 9070 XT. In fact, when you look at all of the games I tested, you see very similar results, with average increases of 8.9 and 6.9% in Cyberpunk 2077, 10.4 and 7.7% .7 in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, 9.4 and 6.2% in Call of Duty Black Ops 6, and 9 and 5.4% in Monster Hunter Wilds. So the higher synthetic benchmark overclock performance for the 7900 XDX does indeed translate into a similar boost in games. This shouldn't be surprising since these synthetic benchmarks are essentially non-playable games that are designed and developed to test your GPU in exactly the same way that modern games do. It's important to keep in mind that these results are silicon dependent, so if you plan to overclock your GPU, then please use these settings as guidance only. In this video, we pitted the two top AMD gaming GPUs against each other in the PC Octagon to see who will emerge victorious, with the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 9070 XT in the red corner, taking on the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 7900 XTX VaporX in the blue corner. The round by round results show an incredibly close battle, with seven wins apiece and five draws across 19 hard fought rounds. When you look at the performance across 18 games, you see that the average gaming performance is identical at lower resolutions, with the 7900 XTX able to pull ahead at 4K. In games that use rasterization such as Company of Heroes 3, the 7900 XTX is a better option, whereas in games that use ray tracing such as Cyberpunk 2077, the 9070 XT is a better option. In fact, if you turn full ray tracing on in Black Myth Wukong, you can see that while neither of these cards are able to generate playable frame rates, the 9070 XT does beat the 7900 XTX by around 60%, which highlights the impressive improvements that were made by AMD with RDNA 4. If we now look at professional workloads such as Blender and Spec, you can see that the 7900 XTX dominates, offering performance advantages of around 20 to 30%, which is likely attributable to the additional 8 gig of VRAM. Moving on to power efficiency, an area where AMD has struggled recently, it becomes immediately clear that they were able to make significant improvements with RDNA 4, with the 9070 XT beating the 7900 XDX by around 17%. But what happens when we look at cost? The Sapphire Nitro Plus 7900 XDX VaporX launched at $1,080, which is approximately 40% higher than the launch price for the Sapphire Nitro Plus 9070 XT. So if you convert those prices into gaming efficiency or FPS per dollar at 4K, 
Block A, then it becomes clear that the 9070 XT offers significantly better value, with increases of around 30% in both average FPS and 1% lows. However, anyone that has attempted to buy one of these cards recently will tell you that they are selling for much more, especially the 9070 XT. Given the impact of tariffs, availability, retail agreed and scalpers, it becomes difficult to lock in a stable real-world price for each GPU. So I found the best way to tackle this issue is to plot FPS per dollar versus price for each card. This allows you to clearly see that the 9070 XT will maintain its advantage in value even if the price increases to around $1000. It also shows just how aggressive AMD was with their launch pricing for the 9070 XT. If you were able to pick one up at $600 on launch day then consider yourself very lucky because it offers truly exceptional value at that price. Unfortunately I doubt we will see these prices again even when base models come back into stock. So should you buy a Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 9070 XT or stick with the 7900 XTX version? Given the gaming performance, value and much improved feature set, the AMD Radeon RX 9070 XT really is an outstanding GPU, even if it's above the launch price established by AMD. The Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 7900 XTX VaporX is still an amazing card, and if you currently own one I wouldn't be in a rush to switch, especially if you use it for professional workloads. However, if you're a gamer that plays a lot of titles with upscaling or ray tracing turned on, then the 9070 XT is an attractive option, and one that you should seriously consider, especially if you can sell your 7900 XTX to cover most of the costs. Sapphire has become my favorite AMD GPU board partner. They produce high quality, well thought out GPU designs that look great and perform extremely well. The biggest issue is finding one in stock. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the Ultimate PC Component Fighting Championship Battle Series. To celebrate hitting the 10,000 subscriber milestone, I'll be giving away a brand new Power Color Red Devil Radeon RX 9070 XT to one lucky member. I know how difficult it is at the moment to get your hands on a next-gen GPU, so hopefully this will help a member avoid the scalpers and be able to game on this amazing GPU. Details on how to enter are listed in the description below. Good luck and bye for now.